Welcome to chapter 4 of Point Set Topology course part 1. So this I have named as largeness properties. Essentially, we are going to study properties of topological spaces such that whenever a topology has it, something which is larger than that will also have it. So that is the rough definition, formal definition we had already given. But there are some more here, which we feel that just like the case of first countability and second countability, they are, they are the opposite here. Something called regularity and normality are not exactly fit into this definition. So, to begin with, we will take the celebrated Frechet spaces. So, that is module 47. So, we begin with a Bourbaki style presentation here. Starting with the topological space X, several statements are equivalent to each other. That is the statement of this theorem. What are these statements? Any one of them can be taken as the definition of Frechet space finally. So that is the whole idea. Okay. So X, Y are different points. There exists an open set U in X such that X belongs to you and Y does not belong to you. So read it carefully. You take two distinct points. Then the statement says there is an open subset containing X but not containing Y. So this statement also implies that there is another open set V which contains Y and not contains X. So that is the, the logical conclusion of the statement. You have to understand that. Because X and Y are two different points. Okay. Just because I have written first X here, second Y, this is not an ordered pair. Okay. So may statement X belongs to you and Y does not belong to you. There is such an U. You can interchange that term also. So that is the first statement. The second statement is any subset of X is the intersection of all open sets containing A. Okay. Take intersection of all open sets containing A that will be equal to A. Any subset. Okay. If you take empty set, what happens? You can take empty set also as an open set. The intersection will be empty. Given any X belonging to X, the intersection of all open sets containing this singleton X is equal to singleton X. So this is a third statement. From arbitrary open subset, arbitrary set, you have come to singleton set. So it's obviously 2 implies 3 is is clear here, right? I have some more statements. It's only three of them. There are more statements here. The theorem continues the statement. The fourth statement says for all x belong to x, singleton x is closed in x. So this one statement is very easy to remember. All the singleton sets are closed. Okay. The fifth one says, every finite subset of X is closed. So that is an easy consequence from 4 because <laughs> finite union of closed sets is closed. The sixth statement is, every subset of X is a union of closed subsets. 
So that is also AD from fourth directly. In any case, it's also five because every subset is a union of finite subsets. The seventh statement is every non-empty subset of X contains a non-empty closed subset of X. So this doesn't seem to be immediate, but we'll see all these things are very easily implying one, one implies the other and so on. They are all equivalent to each other. That is the statement. Okay. So let us go through the proof once again because I have not indicated all the proofs. One implies two. Given two distinct points, okay, there is an open set containing one and not containing the other is the condition one. Okay. Take any subset A of X and a point Y which is not in A then we must find an open set U which contains A but not Y. Okay, so let us look at statement 2 here. Any subset A, the intersection of all open sets containing A, okay, is equal to A. So, if you want to show that it is equal to A, you must produce some open set containing A, but not containing the point Y, where Y is a, not a point of A. So, that is what we have to prove, right? So, that is what we are proving here. 1 implies 2. Okay. By 1, for each X inside A, we have an open subset UX such that u x i have dim because it depends upon it. x belongs to u x and y is not in u x. So you vary x is but keep y as it is. Take u equal to union of all u x is at x varies over a. So this will contain a since none of them contain y. So the union will also not contain y. So when you take intersections of all open subsets containing A, this Y will be left out. So since every point away from Y will be left out, the intersection is exactly equal to A. So that 2 has to, okay. Now 2 implies 3 by merely taking A equal to singleton X. This I have already included, I have already indicated. So what is the statement 3? Take any, take all the collection of all open subsets containing X, the intersection is just singleton X. Okay, that is the statement 3. The 3 implies 4. We want to show that singleton X are closed. That means take singleton X, take the closure. I should show that it is singleton X itself. Okay. This is the same thing as saying that if y is not in x, then y does not belong to x closure, right? X closure is singleton x, this is what you have to show. But by the hypothesis, apply to the point y now. You see, for every point, intersection of all open sets is just that point. Okay, it follows that there exists an open set V such that y is inside v, x is not in v because x is not uh, equal to y, okay. So I am not using number 1 here, I am using number 3 here to conclude this one, okay. So if y, this open set does not intersect the singleton x, that y cannot be in the closure, that's all. So this is the definition of the closure. So 3 implies 4 is over. All the singletons are closed. All right. Now 4 implies fall, uh, 5. Since every finite union of closed sets is closed, every finite subset will be also closed. Okay. The 5 implies 6 is again obvious because every set is the union of finite sets. 
every set is a union of single terms is one one thing next one is every set is a union of finite sets now 6 implies 7 this shows this follows since every non void set has to contain a single term right <laughs> see let us go back and see what is 7 Every non-empty set of X contains a non-empty closed set. Singleton is closed set we have proved. Okay. Every finite set is closed set we have proved already. So non-empty implies what? There is a point. That point, singleton point is closed. So the so this implies seven. Okay. You see, singleton set from sixth. Every subset of X is union of closed sets. Singleton X, how can it be union of anything? It is union of singleton X itself, right? So that must be closed. So it already implies that uh, this implies 6, implies already 4. Okay. So anyway, you can jump from 4 to 7. Now 7 to 1 I will complete. Okay, finally, that will complete the whole chain. 7 implies 1 is what we have So, apply 7 to singleton Y to conclude that it is closed. Singleton Y should contain a closed subset. Right? The singleton Y is closed. That means what? Complement of singleton Y is open and that will contain X. So, you, you can take U to be X minus Y. Okay, so all these statements, implications is one implies other, it's very easy. So we have proved it in a single chain. Okay, now the definition is the following. A topological space which satisfies any one and hence all of all the above conditions namely in the above theorem such a thing is called a fresh space incidentally you know he is one of the founders of this uh, point set topology he had his own definition of topological spaces in which he, he put this extra condition for a topology just like Osdor also had put his, his own extra condition. So the present day definition, later on, whatever is, has been adopted, this is what is called as general topology. General than Freshes as well as Osdorf and so on, which doesn't have these extra conditions. Sir. Huh. So, all the metric spaces will be fresh spaces, right? Obviously, they are fresh spaces. You know, they will satisfy many more properties in this uh, chapter now. You watch out for them. Huh? Metric space is still our motivation after all. But we will see that lots of fresh spaces are there which are not metric spaces. Very first thing you notice is that freshness is a topological property. If X is homeomorphic to Y, X is fresh implies Y is fresh Okay. You can take any one of them. For example, I will take singleton sets are closed. Under the homeomorphism, closed set will go to closed set. So, singleton sets, the other will also close. That's all. Even though it is good to remember all these equivalent conditions so that we can use whichever one is most convenient to us, okay, you may find it somewhat confusing to remember all that. Whereas, condition 4 that just now I used, namely, singleton sets are closed is the easiest thing to uh, to remember for me at least okay therefore i remember fresh space by this condition other things i can derive whenever i want 
Okay, this is a question of, you know, which one to remember. So, fresh air space is for me that every single turn is closed. That's it. One of the important properties of fresh air space is, is that now we have a good characterization of an accumulation point of a subset inside a fresh air space equivalent to what we do in metric spaces. A point x belongs to x is an accumulation point of a subset if and only if every open set containing x contains infinitely many points of A. For a limit point or a closure point, for a closure point, all that you needed is intersection is non-empty. One, one point is enough. But if it's an accumulation point, in particular, if inside a fresh space, just like in a metric space, okay, every point which is a uh, accumulation point should have the property that every open set containing x intersection with a must be infinite. Okay, not very difficult to see. You have to carbon copy metric, but don't use the metric. Use the property that given x and y different, <laughs> there is a point, open subset here, blah, blah, blah. Singleton sets are open, complements are, singleton sets are closed, complements are open. That's all. Okay, that I will need an assignment. Another important property is also an easy consequence of the definition is the following. If f from y to x is continuous, remember y to x, not x to y, huh? x is fresh air here. Inverse image, f inverse of x, that is those are fibers, they are all closed. Why? Because singleton x are closed. Okay. So this is very useful thing. So that's why I have, so for example, we have been using this inverse image, continuous functions, real world continuous real world functions, inverse image of a point, set of all f, set of all x such as fx equal to 0. It's a closed set. So this is because R is fresh A. Okay. So that is why it was working. So now you can you can you can see that. Inverse image of singleton set is closed, singleton is six closed, so inverse image is also closed. Okay. A typical example of fresh space is any set with cofinite topology. See, I don't take metric space as a typical example. Metric space is too good. Take a, any set with cofinite topology, especially take an infinite set. If you take finite set and cofinite topology, then it is just like a discrete space. Okay. Discrete spaces are obviously fresh spaces. But cofinite topology on an infinite set is a typical example of fresh space. It is not metrizable. Okay. It doesn't come from a metric. Okay, so this is what you have to, that is why this is nice. Observe that on a given set, cofinite topology is the smallest topology among all fresh air topologies. So that is why I take this as a typical example. So to get an example of a space which is not fresh air, you have to take some topology which is smaller than cofinite topology. Indeed, freshness is a largest property. Once some topology is fresh, if tau prime is a larger topology than tau, that will be also fresh. It's very easy because singleton sets are closed here. So they will be here also. Right? Here means what? 
If something is closed here, then something is closed here. Something is open here, something is open here. That is the meaning of that. Of course, every metric space is a Fresher space. Fresher space okay, is clearly hereditary. See, singleton sets are closed, intersection. Take A is a subspace of X. Take A singleton A. It will be closed in uh, in X itself, right? So intersection with A is a singleton A itself. So all singleton inside A are also closed. So every subspace of a fresh a space is fresh a very easy. That is hereditary property. It is not co-hereditary. Okay, so here is an example. We can give lots of examples later on. Let us begin with some example. Take X to be the quotient space of R where all the points of an open interval, any open interval, so let us say minus 1 to plus 1 is identified to a single point, collapse the inter open interval to a single point. Minus 1 will se remain separately, 1 will se remain separately. All the points outside minus 1 plus 1 will remain separately, no identifications there. Only whenever x and y are both between minus 1 and plus 1 strictly, they will be all be equivalent to each other. So that is one single class. So let us look at that point, that class, a star. This is just a notation. So in the quotient topology, the star and the image of 1, every member has an image. Everything between minus 1 plus 1 is denoted by star now, one single element, right? So, in the quotient topology, the star and image of 1 will be distinct points, okay? And every neighborhood of the star will contain the image of 1, okay? In the other way around also, every neighborhood of 1 will contain this point. So, you cannot separate them in that way. Okay, every neighborhood of one will contain the image of star. That means it will, every neighborhood of one intersects minus one plus one, the interval. So there will be some point here. So that point is uh, when you go down, it is just a star, right? So this is not a fresh space. So here is another property, fresh space is Productive. Take a family of topological spaces XJ. The product is fresh space if and only if each XJ is a fresh space. Okay. The first thing is suppose the product is a fresh space. Okay. Suppose x, let us take two, two of them only, x cross y. Then I can take x as a subspace of x cross y by choosing some point y. Then look at x cross little y sitting inside x cross capital Y. Right? That is subspace. Since I am assuming x cross y is fresh, this subspace will be also fresh. But x cross little y is homeomorphic to x. It's a copy of x under the map x going to x comma y. So x is fresh. Similarly, y is fresh. Argument is similar. This is the case in the infinite case also, but you have to write down it carefully. That's all. Every factor xj can be thought of as a coordinate subspace just like x going to x comma y okay so that is what i have done here pick up any point y okay then forget about the jth coordinate of that point so that is y i c singleton i see i capital i is singleton j so y i c is complement so all the other things are there that is in a point of x ic 
product taken over this uh, complement only j is missing here okay then if you go to x comma x x going to x comma y i c this will give you an embedding of x j okay x j inside product of x j so each x j is a subspace of x capital j in that sense okay, by hereditariness each x j is fresh a okay we have to prove the converse suppose each x j is a fresh a then why this one is a fresh a okay that is much easier conversely suppose each x j is fresh a take any two points distinct points inside x j what is the meaning of the two points are distinct at least one of the coordinate is different right if all the coordinates are the same then the points are the same so there exists a j in j such that xj is not equal to yj now list space this space xj is a fresh space therefore you will get an open set uj inside xj such that xj is inside that and yj is not there now look at pj inverse of uj that will contain x and y will not be there y is there precisely if the y j j coordinate of y is inside uj but y j is not inside uj over okay so one of the coordinate space you are you, you have used but but to conclude that x is fresh a you have to say all the coordinates because starting with x not equal to y you don't know which coordinate is different right so that is the whole idea hmm. i think uh, we'll stop here we have done good work with how with the uh, fresh spaces next time we will study house door spaces okay somehow the house doorness has taken the limelight it is more important than t1 spaces okay so next time